Welcome to USA Global TV and Radio, where our mission is to provide education, entertainment, hope, and inspiration. USA Global TV and Radio connects you with experts and audiences all around the world every single day to help you succeed in business and to live a richer life. Visit us at usaglobaltv.com to learn about career and life-changing training and mentoring programs like The Listening Mentor. Subscribe to our newsletter to stay informed about our special programs and offers. Discover how you can become a guest on one of our shows or a host or producer of a USA Global TV and radio show of your very own. That's USA Global TV and radio, where the doctor is always in. beautiful soul family and welcome to weekly wisdom and insights your home for spiritually guided transformation and empowerment i am your host dear james and together with the unseen spirit source and symphony we look at the current energies the intuitive insights and wisdom from the unseen and we go as guided so welcome 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 it's an amazing set of energies that are going to arc out for the next year and let me just initially cap the five Um, elements that we're going to be working with. We're looking at the lion's gate, and not just any lion's gate. It's the lion's gate with the red lion. The 888 energies, the color purple, and the upcoming Mars-Jupiter conjunction, and how all of these are going to be interwoven as we uh, work through the broadcast, through the show. And, and again, no matter when you find the, the shows, the Weekly Wisdom and Insights shows, whenever you find them, it's meant to be. There's something in it for you. So while we look at current energies, the moment is the moment for you when you come upon it. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, Olivia. Welcome, Alicia. Welcome, Deborah. So let's jump in because we have so much to cover. Um, we're going to start off with the main energies very quickly. And again, so the Lion's Gate. This is August 7th, so the month is an 8, 2024, the year is an 8, and tomorrow, Thursday, is the 8th, which is the peak of the Lion's Gate, so we have these double and triple 8s, all a doubling and tripling down on this uniting, coming together from the inside out. The 7 is the army, legions, correct discipline. We always have, it's the full card in the tarot, we always have everything we need. We need only look within ourselves. And this is how, of course, we will continue to double down and triple down within ourselves on uniting. The 23, because the 8, the 7, and the 8 becomes a 23, and that's about split apart, regenerate. We're splitting apart from the past, from the old, from what no longer serves us. Why? To regenerate, renew, to leap forward. And this beautiful, and the two and three culminate in a five, nourished while waiting, patience. And it's important to remember to have patience, not only with others, but with ourselves. Because again, nourished while waiting, legions, army, correct discipline, we have everything we need. So these are the main energies that we're looking at. Now let's look at the um, astrological influences. And... The five things that I mentioned, and certainly the lion's gate, the red lion, and the red lion is like alchemical gold. So the lion's gate, the red lion, the 888, the color purple, this and 888, the color purple, highly associated with Master Jesus, all speak to this source of inspiration. And so on the 4th of uh, August, we had the Leo new moon, we had Venus entering Virgo, and we had Mercury stationing retrograde. Tomorrow, 
888-888 is the lion's gate. And then upcoming on the 14th, and you'll see why this is important because what's upcoming on the 14th is Mars-Jupiter conjunction in Gemini is also triggering what occurred on the 15th in July and what and what is occurring tomorrow on the 8th, the Lion's Gate. So remember that these energies are a source of inspiration. Now, let's take a look at our keyword. And we're going to go to it first because all of this is about a transmission, a transmission from the heavens, the high heavens, from the Lion's Gate, from the Red Lion. And transmission, the action or process of transmitting something or the state of being transmitted, the process of passing something from one person or place to another, the act or process of sending electrical signals to a radio, a television, a computer, a human, earth, because everything is energy. And so this Lion's Gate portal, the Lion's Gate energies, and again, there's a window and I'll explain this in a second. There's a window where they begin and close, and its peak is tomorrow the 8th. However, there's the unseen is speaking to the fact that this lion's gate, these energies, they're always potent, but this one they're saying is highly potent. And it's going to arc out um, individually and collectively six months, a year to the next one. So there's a, a, a large focus, and it was very interesting because when they were speaking to the lion's gate, I instantly heard the red lion and I wasn't, but they were very clear. The unseen was very clear. There was a very pointed focus on the red lion. And so you'll see how that plays in a moment, but let's look at 888. And so the number 888 holds profound significance in the Bible, representing the manifestation of God in the flesh to save humankind from sin. Jesus' name adds up to 888 in Greek gematria, underscoring the divine nature of this number. The number 888 is linked to biblical prophecies, such as uh, King Nebuchadnezzar's dream, emphasizing the fulfillment of God's ultimate purposes. Seeing the number 888 repeatedly may be a divine message signifying new beginnings, abundance, and the need to embrace positive change. By understanding and embracing the symbolic power of 888, individuals can unlock blessings, live a life aligned with divine purpose, soul source connection, and experience everlasting abundance. Because again, it's all within us. It's all flowing through us. And so everything we need is present. We're uniting. And we literally experience everlasting abundance. So, and the 88, but this year, 888. So you can see while there's while there is a, a poignancy and a and a prominence to this Lions Gate. And we're going to get into what that all means for uh, anybody that doesn't know about the Lions Gate. So then we have the color purple. And this was a show back on July 17th. It was the color purple and arousing thunder and arousing to evoke to wake to awaken welcome himani and so the symbolism of the color purple has to do with royalty and spiritual wealth the color purple is linked to master jesus leading up to his crucifixion in john 19:2 and the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and put it on his head and they put on and they put on him a purple robe here Jesus was mocked as the king of the Jews with a purple robe. Purple was the color of choice of royalty during the Roman Empire because it was the most labor-intensive, expensive color to create. So we have this 888, the Lion's Gate, the Red Lion, the color purple, and then we have this upcoming Mars-Jupiter conjunction. And the interesting thing about this, here we are, on August 7th with these energies. And remember at the beginning of 2024, the unseen said to us that by the time we got to August, so the latter half of 2024, August on, would be a mixed bag of nuts and surprises. And yet 
go, go, go. There's nothing to worry about, nothing we can't do or accomplish. Persevere and prevail, rise up, move forward. And so let's take a look at what's happening because between now at 8-8 and 814, it may feel like a cosmic whiplash, <laughs> a cosmic roller coaster ride. It may, and this, again, this is going to be arcing out. So it's the next six to 12 months. So depending on where you are in your cycle, in your life, in your thoughts, in your energies, in your manifestations, it will either feel like cosmic whiplash, cosmic roller coaster ride, but it could also be cosmic excitement, cosmic enthusiasm, cosmic exuberance. It all depends on you. So we're going to take a quick look at um, Pam Youngen's North Point Journal. She's an incredible astrologer, and I, I love her North Point Journal, uh, astrology journal. So here she's speaking to the Mars-Jupiter effect. The exact alignment between Mars and Jupiter won't occur until August 14th, but the two planets are separated by only four degrees at this week, as this week begins and they will be within three degrees of each other by this Thursday, August 8th. See the connection. We're, this is out on August 4, 14th, but they're within three degrees of, on August 8th, tomorrow on the Lion's Gate. This date is important to watch, since concrete manifestations related to the effects of an aspect often begin when the planets enter this three-degree range, this orb. So things can start happening now. Throughout the next two weeks, Mars, the god of action and desire, will be energizing the areas of our lives that we associate with Jupiter. Headlines and conversations will focus on morals, ethics, religious beliefs, justice, courts of law, and legal affairs, and international relations, higher education, publications, and philanthropic endeavors. However, the negative qualities of Jupiter will also be activated. Over-optimism, belittling humor, irresponsibility, overindulgence, self-righteousness, dogmatism, and intolerance. So we're going to have this yin-yang, this polarity heightened because Mars is action. Jupiter, great benefactor. They're magnifying one another. At the same time, Jupiter, the god of the sky and thunder, will be magnifying the positive qualities we associate with Mars. Enthusiasm, confidence, courage, forthrightness, a pioneering spirit, and leadership abilities. At the other end of the vibrational scale, we will also observe impatience, selfishness, impulsive or overly risky actions, and aggression. So again, stay, you know, what the unseen is saying is stay in your lane, eye of the hurricane, stay in your lane. Be positive, be proactive. Be kind, be neutral. It doesn't mean don't take action. It Right action, correct discipline. So that, again, we're operating in the positive aspects of both Mars and Jupiter coming together. And then she speaks, uh, Pam Youngen speaks to the Rigel effect. And the Rigel, uh, the Rigel is a fixed star. So the Mars-Uranus conjunction so the Mars-Uranus conjunction that took place on July 15th activated the fixed star Algol and its association with misfortune, danger, and violence. Thankfully, and in strong contrast to last month's alignment, the Mars-Jupiter alignment on the 14th of August is conjunct the fixed star Rigel. Even ancient astrologers who saw most of the fixed stars as being unfavorable believed that Rigel had mostly helpful qualities bestowing honor, riches, happiness, glory, fame, and good fortune. Being touched, this is now an excerpt from, not from uh, Pam Youngen's astrology point, North Point Astrology Journal. There's a little bit of murky retrograde, you can hear it. <laughs> Being touched by this star implies a natural understanding of the truth and alignment with sacred wisdom, both mundane and divine. So, we have this upcoming Mars-Jupiter conjunction on the 14th. Conjunct, it's triggering. It's coming in within orb tomorrow on the 8th, right in concert with the Lion's Gate. Not any Lion's Gate. 
I'm really emphasizing this because the Lion's Gate is an annual occurrence. It happens, it's latter July into mid-August. The peak is 8-8. However, this one is with the Red Lion. And so let's go now to, um, we're going to talk about the Lion's Gate portal. What does it mean? And I'm just going to bring up our main theme image because this is such a beautiful image. The Lion's Gate, the, the Red Lion. And you see this image where the entire sky is like in reds and, and umbers and everything with this beautiful face of a lion coming through from the heavens. And there's one lone tree and it's very, it's very much reminiscent. It invokes the imagery of, of Africa. You know, you're on the plains of Africa and this one lone tree. And then here's this beautiful lion's gate, the red lion coming through from the heavens. So, and this is from astrostyle.com. It's uh, by Felicia Bender and it's the lion's gate portal 888 or 88. Third eyes open when the bold sun in Leo aligns to the star Sirius, known as the spiritual sun. So Sirius is known as the dog star. It's known as the spiritual sun to generate a high frequency energy that activates the lion's gate portal. A layer of energetic opportunity peaks every year called the Lion's Gate. This is when the sun is in Leo and the star Sirius moves closer to Earth and aligns with Orion's belt. The Lion's Gate portal opens every year between July 28th and August 12th, but its official activation day, its peak, is August 8th. Sirius rises during the middle of the summer. Its energy forces opportunities for dramatic new beginnings. And... I just want to add, this is where the first thing from the unseen was old versus new. So here we're talking about that it literally activates new beginnings, dramatic new beginnings, this cosmic whiplash, cosmic roller coaster ride, cosmic excitement, enthusiasm, exuberance. And what was interesting with the unseen saying the first thing was old versus new. The new arrives, it awaits no longer, no more. And the way this was presented to me from the unseen was this ballpoint pen and the ink in this existing ballpoint pen is almost gone. It's, it's almost at its end. And here we were beginning the August energies and everything. And I knew to take out a new pen full of ink, full of promise, prosperity, the ability to write our stories, this endless opportunity, optimism, the old one is over. The ink is almost dry. It's, it's almost empty. And here we are talking about with the, with the lion's gate that it brings about this opportunity. The energy forces opportunities for dramatic new beginnings. This is a time where new levels of consciousness are infused into the planet and also into each of us individually. So as the lion's gate swings open, we are swept over the threshold, almost like one of those old movies where the bride is lifted up and carried over the doorstep as a symbol of the beginning of a new life. And that symbol of them coming together, crossing the threshold as a married couple, it's about a new beginning. It's about unity. It's, it's about celebrating their oneness and their, their arrival and everything that lies before them. The Lion's Gate is the birth of a new and undeniably heightened level of dedication to our ascension process as individual human beings and also as a global entity. Remember, each of us is a strand of the whole. And so we are a piece. We have our own tapestry. We, are, we have our own thread of life. And it is interwoven, 8 billion souls-ish on the planet. All of those individual tapestries and strands are interwoven into a global whole. This moment is ripe for an uncomfortable but necessary acceleration of our spiritual growth. It's like Alice in Wonderland. Alice constantly changes sizes, which of course can be seen as a process of self-actualization. When she consumes liquid from the bottle that says, drink me, she shrinks. 
One might say that we've been in our drink me stage of our collective consciousness, ego, mind, personality, foregoing our soul source connection, our our spiritual divinity, our essence. Now, the Lion's Gate portal offers us the piece of cake that Alice eats and then grows exponentially. In numerology, the eight is the number of infinity. And I just want to bring up, because in the tarot, the number eight is the strength card. Denote, it's the number eight, it's strength, and it's a red lion. It can be a golden lion, but it's also denoted in tarot decks as a red lion. You'll see why this is imp- you'll see why this is important in a moment. But here it is, the tarot, an ancient divination, and she has tamed. She is one with the red lion. So it is the energy of empowerment. Eight is the energy of empowerment. It supports efforts and intentions that manifest in the material world. Its power resides in its ability for manifestation on every level. So when an eight shows up, it is offering assistance to rapidly manifest whatever it's directed towards, like a laser. The eight amplifies anything it is focused on. We've got the red lion, the alchemical gold, from the lion's gate on 888, focused, uber focused on us, transmission something being transmitted to us, to planet Earth. So it amplifies anything it's focused on. The presence of the Lion's Gate energy aligns with the heart center and embodies the Leo of courage, strength, and expression. You just saw the Leo, the lion, in the tarot. This portal is sweeping all of humanity into our next phase, where the apex is centered on unconditional love. Love thy neighbor as thyself and thy God above all other. Love. Not hate, not fear, not shadow. Love, light, harmony, unity, oneness. Of course, our, any birthing process is painful and exhilarating in equal measure. This one marks a graduation from now into a new now. And remember, it need not be painful. This process, this transition from, welcome Genevieve, this transition from the patriarchal Piscean era to the matriarchal Aquarian era, it need not be painful. We should all be exuberant and and receive it with great joy, with great promise. It is literally walking over the threshold into the new and everything that lies before us. We are pushed to let go of whatever isn't serving our highest and best evolution. 23, splitting apart. Whether that's toxic relationships, outdated ways of thinking, or the habit to downgrade our true purpose, we are all coming face to face with a reinvention point. The time is now. So we are really being called upon at this moment to take stock, to look at the the masks, the identities, the labels, the fears that we carry, to empty and purify our vessels, our vessels, our bodies. They are the temple of the soul. They are the vehicle of the soul. They are the seat of the soul, the home of the soul. Understand that these transformative times are exciting. They're not to be feared. They're exciting. They offer incredible positive movement in soul growth and personal fulfillment. But they can feel turbulent and scary during the process. Of course, cosmic whiplash, cosmic roller, uh, roller coaster ride, the cosmic two by four if you're holding on. And trust me, nobody want, don't do not. <laughs> You do not want the cosmic two by four to come out and just whack the crud out of you. Be proactive, be in the flow, because you you have everything you need. You, you, you know. You know when you're meant to let go of something. It may be scary, but that's okay. Let go. And you know when to take a leap of faith and jump forward, cross the threshold. 
and I love this because we've been talking about this for three years now. Um, she, she goes on to say, you have a golden Lionsgate ticket to go inward. And here we are. We have, I've shown this image. It's up on the screen, this golden ticket with zero, one, two, three, four. It's new adventures await. It's new opportunities. And she is speaking to the fact you have a golden Lionsgate ticket to go inward. Also be aware that this powerful energy can make, make us anxious, moody, suddenly sad, and then blissfully happy. Whiplash, roller coaster. It can also make us feel fatigued on a physical, emotional, mental, and even soul-centered level. This energy offers a container of transformation that is shifting the cosmic ether. It's almost as if we are uh, experiencing a severe and dramatic drop in barometric pressure. Our bodies will inevitably have to respond to this sudden change in atmosphere. We are going to feel it mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically. And Alicia is saying, I need positive new beginnings. Yes. And here we are right on time. And Genevieve, Pointer Sisters, I'm so excited. I just can't hide it. <laughs> exactly. It's exactly the lane we want to be in. And Deborah, ha ha, I have been seeing one, two, three, four a lot the last few days. It's all speaking to us about letting go of the old. Old versus new. The new arrives, awaits no longer. No more. It's not, it's here. The time is now. She goes on to say, so if you feel exhausted, emotional, have sleep disruption, and are simply sensing that for some weird reason, life is not status quo, remember to take time to recalibrate and nurture yourself during this somewhat jarring transition. So this is about the Lion's Gate and this beautiful write-up article by Felicia Bender from astrostyle.com. So, and I want to go to our mantra very quickly because it's the right time before we go into um, the red lion. The mantra, our mantra, I am whole, I am complete, I am enough. And this is literally a beautiful image. You see the cosmic swirl, the whirlpool, you see the heavens and the stars. The tree is the tree of life. It looks barren. Maybe one would even say not alive. And yet, perhaps it's just resting because there's a ladder. We're climbing the tree of life. We're reaching to the stars and the heavens. And we're doing so through, via, on the back. Remember, we stand on the shoulders of giants on the tree of life. And then there's this beautiful light bulb on a, on a strand illuminating our path, showing us the way. So no matter where you are, if it looks barren or it looks absolutely fertile, as they say in, in French, Silamem shows, it's the same thing. Because the tree of life is not dead, it's it's quite alive. Welcome, Alex. And so we're at this moment of transition of, and of of transmission, receiving everything is energy. Be open. To the be open to the, the the signals, the electricity, the transmission of your soul source connection of your soul, because it's connected. Lionsgate, the red lion. So let's jump in now to cover the red lion, and I'm going to bring up this beautiful image, and you're going to be here. It is. The green lion is on the left, the red lion is on the right. So bear with me and keep these images in your mind. And this is by uh, Tony uh, Leguia on medium.com. The green lion devouring the sun. Alchemy, and this is an, an excerpt prior to his article. Alchemy was the ancient art and science, the mother of chemistry that sought to transform base metals into silver or gold. Alchemical practice took almost identical form in ancient China, India, Egypt, and Greece, and philosophers from these cultures applied the theory of transformative elements 
to an esoteric spirituality. Just as lead can be turned into gold, so too can the human soul achieve a perfect state, transformed in the oven, the athenor, of the heart by love and awareness about our true spiritual common nature. We are love. We are divine. We are one. And thus, we have this ability to cosmically transform ourselves from a base element, ego, mind, personality, to gold, soul source, spirituality, divinity. So here we go with Tony Laguia's article. The green lion devouring the sun is an ancient motif of alchemy. Contrary to the imaginations of many people, alchemists were not failed chemists. Rather, they were explorers of not only the chemical properties and reactions of substances, but also practitioners of a sophisticated psychological art. Its goal, and I'm just going to bring this up because I want you guys to, its goal was the total transformation of the personality into an agent of the divine. Later, C.G. Jung incorporated the methods, archetypes, and symbols of alchemy into his system of analytical psychology. In effect, he viewed alchemy as the yoga of the West. So what this Lion's Gate portal, this one, and the red lion, the alchemical gold, is speaking to us about, and what is it, it'll transmit to us, is this opportunity to transform our ego mind personality to harmonize, purify them, splitting apart, purify them so as to become our higher selves, so as to lead with our soul source connection, our soul. The sun is a symbol of the ego. Shining and brilliant, it feels entitled that all else should revolve around it. Lo, there comes the green lion to devour it. The green lion, as king of beasts, represents the instincts. In this image, the one that's been on the screen, in this image, we witness an encounter of the ego with the instinctive primal forces within us. We fear our instincts and know them to be dangerous, so we repress them. So in their native, raw, animalistic form, they can quickly, easily turn shadow, become shadow, ego, mind, personality, shadow side. Civilization is an enterprise seeking to repress our instincts in exchange for peace and comfort. Much of this process is positive, but it has become inwardly weak ignoring our inner experiences and separating us from our instincts to a detrimental degree. This is about the foregoing of the soul, the soul source connection, our intuition, our knowing. It is not ego mind personality based. It is a knowing. It is felt. It's not thought. In our dangerous nature, there lies a power that can propel us forward. There lies a power that can propel us forward. That power is your soul source connection. It is your soul. It is your divinity, your divine nature. It is not the ego mind personality. It is strength, not force. The image corresponds to the releasing of primordial essence. That is why the lion is green, which is a primordial, unripe color. It's also the color of abundance currency. It also connotes fecundity. There we go. The abundance, the abundance, fertility, and so forth. Eating the sun symbolizes the dominance of the ego by instinctual forces. It is the beginning of a return to a more natural psychological state in which human beings flourish. It is the return home to the soul, to your soul source connection. And number four from the unseen, and this was so beautiful, they said, turning the corner. 
the last stretch. It's like turning the corner to that last stretch to the road home. And there was a, the image for any of you that live in any world in the rural United States or have been, you know, on a, an old country road or you live in a small town or in, in your country. The image was that you're coming to that last stop, that last turn. And as you turn, it's that final road home. Now, in the image, it's like it invokes the uh, the image of, you know, home as in where you grew up or where your parents live or family lives and so forth. Here, it's number four from the unseen. It's turning the corner. It's the last stretch. It's the last, it's the road home. It's the home stretch. And what they're speaking to us, the unseen is speaking to us is, it is this final turn, this, this last stretch of roadway back home to our soul, to our soul source connection, to the unity, ego, mind, personality, heart, soul source connection, Mazda engine, the rotary engine, all in harmony and unity back home with source, God, Master Jesus, Master Jesus, however you identify with that higher arc of oneness and unity and creation. This is what they're speaking to. Um, so the ego perceives the encounter as terrifying because all transformational processes appear to be a kind of death to the ego. See, the ego mind personality is afraid. It's been in charge. It's been, it, it never has been in charge. <laughs> The soul source connection is in charge. Source is in charge. However, in this 2000 plus years era, Piscean patriarchal, the ego has, the ego mind personality has been at the forefront. And so this is a symbolic death. And remember, we need, we absolutely want and need an, a healthy ego mind personality. So it's not about killing the ego mind personality. It's about purifying it. It is about unifying it with the heart and the soul. However, this process is the catalyst for an encounter with the self. The instincts are amoral uh, relative to human society and culture. Social conditioning aims to keep the instincts in check until the higher self is adequately present. Once present, our attitudes and feelings will be conditioned and directed by the self. Otherwise, we experience a regression to our animalistic nature. So here, Tony is talking about how things are held in balance and check until the higher self is present, the soul source connection, because otherwise we regress into the shadow, in our, into our animalistic nature. In the background, just bringing up the image again. In the background, there is a new sun emerging from the waters. It is the new personality emerging from the encounter. See, when we split apart from the old, when we, when we allow our ego mind personality to sit in the sidecar in service to the soul, everything, it is a new birth. It is literally emerging from the waters. So the old sun, having been killed by the lion, needs a replacement in the form of a new resurrected sun. Water is a feminine symbol and thus associated with the unconscious. Ultimately, all that we are emerges from the oceans of the unconscious, and our egos are but a bobbing cork on its waves. It is the unconscious that creates new patterns and modes of operation for the ego. So it is, always has been, always will be, the ego, the, the soul source connection that is truly guiding us, that is your true north. It is not the ego mind personality. The ego mind personality takes action, harnesses what your soul brings through, what it guides you to do or not to do, to advance or to hold. But everything is actionary and it's all based on choice. We see seven red stars in an arc through the lion's body. 
This evokes correspondence to the seven chakras, which would have been known as the seven inner metals to the alchemists, or the seven interior planets to the Kabbalists. Here, they align with the instincts, initiating the destruction of the current personality and providing the raw material for its rebirth. So we have everything we need. It's an inside job. And yet, we are being provided the raw materials for its rebirth, the transmission from the lion's gate, from the red lion. Eventually, the green lion must evolve into the red lion. Here we are. Fearsome and matured, the red lion has come into the fullness of its power. The instincts, now ripe, become a fountain of libido, propelling the personality to new heights and revealing undiscovered realms within. See, the red lion denotes the harmony, the unity, the oneness within us, the soul source connection, the heart, and the ego mind personality, all in oneness, in unity, no separation. They operate as one. And so it is literally this, um, it reveals, as Tony is saying, undiscovered realms within us. And we've had Sabian symbols that were saying, oh, I didn't know this was possible. Wow. Color to technicolor. We live in a world of color. We, we lived in a world not too long ago of black and white. Then we came to color. We are moving into technicolor. So, um, finally, the lion becomes the golden old lion. At this stage of development, the instincts are fully sublimated in service to the self, meaning to the soul. Not ego, mind, personality, but to the self, the higher self, the soul. Each of us must have such an encounter if we are to individuate. We must access the terrifying primal presence within the wilderness of our psyche, meaning we must face our ego mind personality, our shadow elements. We are not to run from them, fear them, or live by them, lead with them. We are meant to harness them. And I'm just going to go back to our mantra. I am whole. I am complete. I am enough. There is nothing we are lacking. And there is nothing within us to fear. However, it's required. We must face, access and face this terrifying primal presence within the wilderness of our psyche. The encounter is a kind of death. So you see this theme. It's a spiritual symbolic death and rebirth. It is a confrontation against the truth that the ego is neither the sole occupant of our minds nor ultimately who we are. We've been in this era, this energy where I am, you know, I, 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 I. The ego mind personality, the masks, the labels, the identities, the scripts. That is not what this is about. It is simply the role we currently play. As we navigate into the inner wilderness, the savagery found there is a valid part of us. And once set in service to a higher power, it becomes a fountain of potential possibility, a potential and possibility. So see, again, so once set in service to a higher power, once we align our ego mind personality in service, in concert with and service to the soul. A fountain of potential and possibility. Welcome, Sue. This is what the red lion at this lion's gate is transmitting to us. It is the transmission. It is so loud. The message is so loud. And it brings me to the unseen, the number three, the three, the, the Trinity, the rotary engine. And I heard two different songs. It's All Coming Back to Me Now by Celine Dion and The Way We Were by Barbara Streisand. It's in the title. The message is in the title. 
all of this energy that we're speaking about with the lion's gate, the red lion, the alchemical gold, master Jesus, the color purple, 888, it's all coming back to me now. Somewhere within you, these words, the, these energies, this resonance is awakening evoking something, awakening within you. Why? Because it's the way we were. It's the way we are, but it's the way we were, meaning that's who we are at a soul level. And that is where, this is where we're going, and it is what we're to do, and it is how we're to navigate this time. This lion's gate energy, the red lion, this upcoming Mars Jupiter conjunction, this whiplash and roller coaster ride, these cosmic energies. With that, I'm going to go to the second thing before we finish with the Sabian symbols because they're just amazing and we have two beautiful quotes. And you'll see how they tie in. The second thing that the unseen said was monkey see, monkey do. So we are going to experience collectively. And perhaps individually, depending on where you are, monkey see, monkey do. You don't want to be, don't you, you don't want to be, uh, you know, a sheep, a blind monkey, just following monkey see, monkey do, because they were also then saying monkey mind, chatter, distress. It's not pretty. It's not going to be pretty release with three exclamation points. So in other words, the moral of the of the story here with number two from the unseen is you don't have to just follow along. You can awaken. You can evolve. You can harness these powerful lion's gate energies from the red lion. It's alchemical gold when you triumph over your ego mind personality. What remains is the beauty of your soul, your heart, and your purified, your sublimated ego mind personality in service to the soul. And that is cosmic gold, alchemical gold. That's the red lion. And it's the red lion is regal, royal, and red. So, and it's and it's recognizing that at that moment. You become whole within yourself. There's nothing outside of you. There's nothing ego, mind, personality driven. You recognize that you're the custodian of this journey, of your vessel, of everything that comes through you. You, you are the benefactor of the divine. So when you, you know, you, you, you're the top salesperson in your company or you create the most beautiful piece of art or you're the operatic singer that hits the highest note, or you're the Olympian that's winning gold. You are the custodian of that experience. You are the co-creator and recipient of that transmission from the divine. Yes, you, the human, the ego, mind, personality, heart, soul, human, shows up, puts in the effort and the work to to experience it, to achieve it. However, it is not you. It is the divine working through you, transmitting through you. And that is important to remember whether you're a person, an institution, a business, an enterprise, a government. It's why in the United States, we the people, we the people, Aquarian, we the people, create the energy and it comes through us and it to what degree is it ego mind personality shadow or soul source connected based which is it let's look at our two quotes the first quote when you merge the world in here with the world out there your destiny is revealed this is by Carrie Hone at cafeosoul.com so when you merge the world in here with the world out there, your destiny is revealed. It's an inside job. In here means heart, 
soul-centered connection. It doesn't mean ego, mind, personality. That's the out there. That's the action. It's how you marry what's in here out there, and it reveals your destiny. The next, the next quote is, everything is destiny. You get this theme, destiny. Everything is destiny. All things are already complete in oneself. This is by the master. So, and there's a beautiful antique key laying on a wooden table. So the elements of wood and metal. And the fact that, again, the key, you are the key. It's within you. Everything is destiny. All things are already complete in oneself. And it goes back to our mantra. I am whole. I am complete. I am enough. So let's look at the final, because these Sabian symbols are off the charts and how they tie in and really quite extraordinary. So Sirius, the planet Sirius, the star Sirius, pardon me, the star Sirius, its Sabian symbol is Cancer 15. In a sumptuous dining hall, guests relax after partaking of a huge banquet. The keynote, the need that exists at an early stage of human growth to materialize the concept of fulfillment. This symbol talks to materialization of the spiritual. We're, we're bringing in, we're going to make tangible the spiritual. We're going to bring it in. So transmission, being transmitted, received, and then applied. The sun is at Leo 17, a volunteer church choir singing religious hymns. The keynote, the feeling of togetherness which unites human men and women in their dedication to a collective ideal. Its key word is togetherness. So unity, togetherness, wholeness. So we have materialization of the spiritual, togetherness. Now here's where it gets juicy, as the Lady Jacqueline would say. The lot of fortune. Sagittarius, eight. Eight degrees. Within the depths of the earth, new elements are being formed. The keynote, the alchemical fire which both purifies and transforms the very substance of man's inner life. Alchemy, Lionsgate, the red lion, alchemical gold. This is the lot of fortune. Forces are at work in the deepest layers of the psyche, which in their own way respond to the outer stimulation produced by a strong involvement in a group, ambitions, and emotions, and even by and even more by the powerful tensions and releases of love. An alchemical process goes on, usually unnoticed by the conscious ego, until it becomes obvious that a kind of mutation has taken place and a new level of awareness and of responses to life has been reached. So again, this is coming from the unseen, from, from source from the lion's gate, from the red lion, from Master Jesus, from the color purple, from the energies of the 888, from the energies of the Mars-Jupiter conjunction. They're saying, well, that <laughs> we're going to cover that next week. What the unseen is saying is, mm, that's going to be the Mars-Jupiter conjunction is going to either be the crossing of the threshold or the, or the, the tripwire, the tripping of the tripwire, depending on where you are. At this stage, we deal with both the basic rhythm of growth of the human being and the reaction to more individualized experiences which aroused the emotions. The very substance of the person's nature undergoes modifications on, uh, modifications on the upon which a new step may be taken. So upon which a new step may be taken. The symbol draws our attention to the inner changes. It's an inside job. It's going to be internal. We must become aware of them. What is implied is a kind of psychic gestation. The period between gestation, the period of time between conception and birth. So between the time between receiving and manifesting, experiencing, externalizing. Fascinating. It has to do with alchemy, um, this psychic gestation, this transformation. Here the ascendant for, and this is for, let me just bring it up really quickly, the astrological chart. This is the chart for 
the Lion's Gate 888. So these symbols are based on this event chart for the Lion's Gate, which occurs on August 8th, 2024. So here's the Ascendant. The Chanticleer, the Chanticleer is a rooster. So the Chanticleer's voice heralds sunrise. The keynote, a creative and joyous response to life processes. The cock that crows as the first coloring of dawn appears at the eastern horizon is a beautiful symbol of the ability demonstrated by all pioneers and cosmically attuned individuals to give voice to what is yet unmanifested. But it is on the way to manifestation. So it's the rising sun. It's, it's what's going to be. It's, it's yet manifested. It's what lies before us in the, in the new day as the new day dawns. At the ego level, the Chanticleer, the rooster, may feel that they make the sun rise. But someday they will learn through painful experiences that to create is only to reveal what essentially is. It is the vivid recognition of the as yet unknown in the known. So see, this symbol speaks to the fact that it is not us. It is not I doing this. We are the custodians. We are the recipients. We are the co-creators. But we are not source. We are not original intelligence. Original intelligence is original intelligence. Artificial intelligence is artificial intelligence. But it's not the original. Live Memorex. It's not live. This third stage symbol should make us think afresh about issues we too often take for granted. At every sunrise, there are a few isolated witnesses that herald the coming of a new day. What is at stake here is the individual's capacity of response to life's renewals. Renewals which are cyclic, predictable, yet always new, always creative. It's how we show up in the world. It's how we greet the new day, the new era, the new 2,000 plus year um, Aquarian matriarchal age. It is our response to life's renewals. Mercury, the great message, how we think, how we speak. Black and white children play together happily. The keynote, the overcoming of social, cultural prejudices. Freedom from all the forms, biases, and idiosyncrasies of the particular culture and class in which one has been born and educated is a sine qua non of the consciousness truly on the path. I mean, it's the overcoming where it, it's, it's a representation of, of truly being on the path. The ideal of universal brotherhood underlies all great spiritual teachings, for they, for they all are like branches of the one tree. Remember our tree of life in our mantra image. Um, so they are the, um, they're all like branches of the one tree, man, humankind, in their divine state. This does not mean there are no racial differences, but rather that these differences have a functional value in terms of the whole organism of humankind and of the planet Earth. It is our diversity. It is our uniqueness that makes us, that empowers us, that makes us um, exemplar and yet one, unified. So again, can you imagine that we live in a world, literally in a world, where everything's black and white? There would be no color. Think about that for a moment. We live in a world of color. We're moving to a world of technicolor. Everything's going to come alive. It always has been, but we're going to be aware of it. But just imagine living in a, in a world literally a physical earth that is black and white. It is our color. It is our difference that unifies us, that amplifies, that magnifies, that brings about opportunity and possibility and 
color. At this fourth stage, the basic technique, which applies to all truly spiritual progress, is clearly stated. Every human being should be seen, approached, and warmly met as a child of God, or in less religious terms, as an exemplar of man, of humankind. Such a status gives to every social and interpersonal group the character of a brotherhood, a sisterhood, unity. This is where we're on the the precipice. This has all been, remember, the ideal becomes the new reality. We have been working through all of this for millennia. And yet it it doesn't make it any less true. And we are literally on the precipice of this moment. I'm just going to quickly go through these, mindful of the time, the moon. In a collection of perfect specimens of many biological forms, a butterfly displays the beauty of its wings, its body impaled by a fine dart. The keynote, the immortal arctical reality that a perfect and dedicated life reveals. This 13th scene is an actional phase because in it, the perfection of individual activity is revealed and immortalized. This is the symbolical transfiguration at the Mount of Transfiguration. Pardon me. At the Mount of Transfiguration, Jesus, the Son of Man, was impaled by the ray of divine light, making of him a son of God. It was at this very moment that he learned of the crucifixion awaiting him. Thus, the merely human individual is, quote, made sacred, becoming the pure embodiment of an archetype. The moon, what the moon reveals. This was in a previous show, what the moon reveals. The moon reveals our divinity, our sacredness, our transfiguration, our being pierced by divine light. Lilith, a man revealing to his students the foundation of an inner knowledge upon which a new world could be built. It talks about transmission. So this new world is being transmitted to us. How we receive it, how we experience it, that's up to us. Venus, a man becoming aware of nature spirits and normally unseen spiritual agencies. Color, technicolor. And how we may say, is my mind playing jokes on me, you know, games on me? but it has to do with imagination. The South Node, having passed safely through narrow rapids, a canoe reaches calm waters. This is about the fact that we make it through, we get there, we arrive, we receive the new. And its key word is relief. Pluto, remember Pluto's moving back into Capricorn very briefly before it officially moves into Aquarius. Not in, not in 246 years, French-American industrial revolutions. Pluto, an old adobe mission in California. And this speaks to the concretization of an ideal. making Manifesting, making something concrete, tangible. The ideal becomes the new reality. Saturn, the master instructing his disciples. It has to do with about the transfer of power and knowledge which keeps the original spiritual and creative impulse of the cycle active and undeviated, activating soul source, keeping our divinity um, undeviated in the renewal of the cycle. Its keyword, investiture, the action of formally investing a person with honors or rank. We're being given something from the unseen, from source. It's not... It's not airy-fairy. It's tangible and real. North Node, a teacher gives new symbolic forms to traditional images. It has to do with abstraction. And it's the, this is a phase of abstraction and of emo- uh, emotional allegiance, emotional intelligence, empathy, compassion, understanding, kindness. Emotional allegiance and intelligence. The, an abstraction, the quality of dealing with ideas rather than events. We're dealing with the ideas and we're manifesting them and bringing them forward. Chiron, the wounded healer, blown inward by the wind, the curtains of an open window take the shape of a cornucopia. 
its key phrase is molded by transpersonal forces or being molded and sculpted by the unseen. Soul source connection. Last, last two, Uranus. A woman, past her change of life, experiences a new love. Keynote, man's capacity to rise in consciousness and feelings above biological limitations. We're rising above the physical. We're moving beyond that. Whenever this stage is brought to a person's consciousness, the indication is that he or she should freely open his or her mind to the possibility of what? New beginnings. Ideally, the new beginning should imply a more mature response to the new possibility of experience. Elevated, it's the red lion. It's speaking to the fact that ideally the new beginning should imply a more mature response, that's the red lion, we're no longer the green lion, to the new possibility of experience. Crossing the threshold, everything's new. It's the fully, it's the fully filled pen. And last but not least, Jupiter, a woman activist in emotional speech dramatizing her cause, a passionate response to a deeply felt new experience. At this stage, we are dealing with the exteriorization of the original impulse, meaning the emergence from the vast ocean of potentiality, which constitutes human nature at all levels. What is at stake is a process of communication of new experiences. Are we moving forward? Of course we're moving forward. So is it new? Are we choosing the new or the old? The mind is called upon to perform its work, but what comes first is the action of that mind, which is moved passionately and which attempts to move other minds by passionate means. Its its key phrase is the proselytizing mind. Proselytizing, to recruit, persuade, or convert, especially to a new faith, institution, or cause to a new beginning, to a new era, Aquarian age, uh, matriarchal rule, unity, harmony, oneness. So we're going to close with, I'm going to close with that because we're running over with the time, but what an incredibly powerful lion's gate, red lion, alchemical gold, 888, Master Jesus, the color purple moment, offering, opportunity, transmission. I urge you, the unseen urges you to receive it openly, with open arms, with an open heart, with an open mind. Receive what is on offer for you. Be in the flow. Avoid monkey see, monkey do, monkey mind, monkey chatter. Um, Because we're turning the corner. We are on the final stretch home. And I cannot wait to see where it all goes. So until then, thank you all so much for your presence, your comments, and, and your energies, your love, your unity. It is a beautiful soul family. Um, And as you're inspired to, please like, share, subscribe, go to darejames.com and just see all the different offerings that are available to um, all of us, to all of you. So thank you. And until next week, be well, be safe, and be happy.